Okay. Um, uh, so let me start with uh, why did I choose this topic first? Because you all will be wondering, I'm, looks, I'm looking so small, like what she's going to talk about. Uh, so uh, basically, I was working as an embedded engineer. So that's why I, cho I have chosen. I did my degree in electronic and communication engineering. And uh, I, I worked as an embedded engineer. So I got some hands-on experience with embedded applications. Um, so uh, that's the main topic, embedded applications. Uh, and then why Debian? So I was part of uh, Debian, uh, if you know Google Summer of Code. How, you, how many of you know about Google Summer of Code? Yeah, uh, that's one of the global program that brings uh, students into the open source community. So that's where I was introduced to the open source community. And I got a lot of experience when I was doing my uh, program there. And then I got lots of opportunity uh, all around the world to speak and uh, share my experience. Uh, I, I, I had my uh, speak in Open Source Summit, North America, Europe, Japan. So thanks to Google Summer of Code I got for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so now, um, uh, this year, uh, I was a, uh, finally I was a mentor and uh, organization administrator for Google Summer of Code with Debian. And thanks to Debian for giving me that opportunity as well. And then Python. Uh, so it's, of course, it's Python. So I had to include Python. And I already worked a few with uh, Python. So I just combined all these and connected the dots and created this topic. Uh, so, uh, so let me start it. Uh, so how many of you use Python here for your embedded applications? Can you all raise your hand? Yeah, so I can see a few hands. So that's what the statistics says. So 95% of code for embedded system is written almost in C or C++. But you know already Python is, Python is uh, it's a, a number one uh, language for the uh, top programming languages. And also it's open source programming languages. So uh, there is always a necessity to bring the Python into the embedded system. So today, I'm here to convince that how we can migrate from C++, most of the C++ stuff, to Python. So bringing that 95 percentage for the Python into the embedded application. So let me compare Python and uh, C for embedded application. Uh, so as you all know, Python is an interpreted language, and C is a compiled language. Uh, and um, since it's easy to write, you, there's uh, less error. And C, um, you can see it's more error. So when I started coding, I started with C. Uh, so uh, you know, I, I have engineering background. So uh, I, did, I started with C. So for me, for, I mean, uh, for me, it was not that hard to learn that language because the syntax, uh, when you like uh, learn for three months, you just have, you just start coding if you have brain. But Python, it's easy. It's easy for you, uh, for anyone uh, if you're a hobbyist or you don't need to be an engineer to code for embedded. So uh, mostly, if you see the embedded application, most of the um, hobbyists they hop into the embedded uh, field because um, it's. Uh, robotics uh, drawn so anyone can work on it so uh, so if if a, a person who is not in the um, engineering background or uh, technology background they can easily move to the uh, python language easily so it's easily uh, writable uh, you know the syntax are very uh, easy so when i shifted from uh, uh, c to uh, python i was like i i wasted a lot of time learning this just the syntax because uh, python is very easy uh, to read um, and a major problem with the Python is the, uh, it takes a lot of time for running. So C, it, uh, it, it, uh, it runs fast. So that's the major advantage in C. So that's the major reason, because in, mostly in the embedded application, they uh, prefer the speed, right? So um, that's what uh, people go for C, uh, and they uh, leave out the Python. So, uh, let's see how can we compensate that speed uh, problem. Um, so this is just uh, Python for embedded. It's the top programming language, and it's open source. So anyone can uh, edit it and uh, use it for their own purpose. So if you are trying to use for a special purpose in embedded system, you can uh, you can itself edit it because it's an open source programming language. And um, when you're in working in a team, it's easy for someone to read your code. 
So they can uh, collaborate with each other and they can read your code and edit it. So it's easy for um, uh, collaborating with the team. So how can we compensate that uh, speed problem? So uh, uh, from the table, you might have seen that um, C has a runtime speed problem, right? So how can we compensate that? So uh, we can use the Cython um, where it includes a part of C and tries to um, increase the speed, or uh, you can go for the just-in-time compilers. Uh, mostly in PyPy, they try to use, for, uh, use these just-in-time compilers. So these are some of the um, Python uh, libraries you could use for embedded application, MicroPython, Embedded Python, uh, C Python, PyPy. So I just did a research and um, just uh, listed down which you could use. So mostly um, embedded application means Internet of Things, artificial intelligence. So uh, you can see most of the uh, artificial intelligence uh, programmings are done with uh, tens of, I mean, the, uh, for example, the tens of law, uh, it runs with uh, Python. So if it's, it's, it would be easy if we could uh, shift the Internet of Things also to uh, Python from C so that we could combine artificial intelligence, um, which is already in Python, uh, to combine together. So this is uh, about the MicroPython. I think you might have got the um, introduction about the uh, MicroPython from the previous uh, talks. So I don't want to go much into this. Mm, uh, so I'm part of Debian, so I had to speak about it. So these are some of the um, devices uh, that can run uh, with uh, Python. Mm, they are Raspberry Pi, uh, BeagleBone Black, Black uh, Gumstick, and the uh, modules. Uh, so let, uh, let me give an introduction about the Debian. Uh, how many of you know Debian already or using? How many of you know already? Uh, how many of you are using it? All right. <laughs> so um, uh, Debian called itself uh, as a uh, universal operating system, and it was founded in 1993. And um, I, I had the same age as Debian, so yeah. <laughs> so Ian Murdoch, uh, that Ian, uh, De uh, Ian in Debian came from Ian Murdoch, and the Deb came from the her girlfriend, uh, his girlfriend. Um, so that's the basic introduction for Debian. Uh, so this year, uh, the, uh, you know, Debian, uh, have you all heard about Debian uh, DebConf? Um, okay, it's the annual developers uh, conference. Uh, all the Debian developers, they uh, gather in any part of the world uh, to um, collaborate and uh, work more, about, uh, more on the Debian packages. And uh, so since I was part of Google Summer of Code, I got the opportunity. In 2016, I was a Google Summer of Code student, so I, I was part of uh, De DebConf in 2016. I presented my project. And this year, it happened in Taiwan uh, last month. Uh, so I, I was fortunate enough to be part of the um, uh, DebConf as well. Um, so I was uh, organization administrator for um, Debian with Google Summer of Code. So um, there was a GSOC session, so that's uh, that's me being presenting that project. Uh, so, before, uh, so most of the time in the embedded application, we are mostly using the Raspberry Pi, Black uh, BeagleBone, Black or Arduino, right? So, um, Raspberry Pi mostly uh, it runs with Debian. Uh, the The operating system is the Raspbian. So, how many of you are using Raspberry Pi already? And Raspbian with running? OK. Uh, so uh, there comes the Debian. So if you haven't running, uh, if you haven't running it uh, on um, your personal computer, you might be using it for the uh, Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, so it's the free oper uh, uh, operating system. It runs on Raspberry hardware. And then comes the BeagleBone Black. Uh, that is also one of the popular um, microcontroller, microprocessor used uh, for uh, embedded application. Uh, they also mostly it runs on Debian. So if you want to know more about the embedded and Debian, you can uh, go to that website and uh, learn more about it. Um, so. 
Yeah, I think I finished it so fastly there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so that, that talk's finished a little bit early, so we've got plenty of time for questions. If anyone has any questions about Debian? Thank you very much uh, for that. I was wondering, what was your uh, Google Summer of Code? What was the first one that you were? Uh, that was on real-time communication. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any more questions? So I've tried uh, running Raspbian on uh, Raspberry Pi, but I haven't tried the BeagleBone. Uh, in your experience, how do you compare the two? Is it like easier in one or the other, or do you have like advantage? In so I, I I worked both with uh, Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone Black. So mostly, uh, I think there's a problem with the uh, uh, BeagleBone Black for uh, installing. You might have faced problem. Uh, I have tried the problem? BeagleBones, but how how do you find using it in BeagleBone? Uh, so I had the problem I installing, but once you install, it's a normalized uh, terminal, but uh, you don't get to get the graphical user interface, but it's just a command line interface. But it's almost same as this. If you're using uh, Raspberry Pi, just the command line, it's same as that. Any more questions? Thank you very much, Germany. <laughs>